You're listening to the Audacious Church Podcast. This message was recorded live at our Chester campus. We know this is a great investment into your life. So tune in, listen up and stay focused. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. And we are in our Own It series. And we had Pastor Mark last week. We tuned into Manchester. He brought a fantastic message. And today we're going to be going further into that. And we're going to be talking about owning your thinking. But I just want to encourage us all today, before we get started, we get on the preach, that that our praise is matching the call that God is putting on this house. And I say that because I've come, came in this week and I can feel the temperature. It's like you guys have turned a dial up. We've heard the vision. Our leaders have gone over the top, scouted the land. They've said it's good. And now we've been brought in and our praise is matching. Church, let me encourage you that our praise is what's going to lead us into the promised land. It is our praise that is going to lead us into the vision that our pastors have got for this church, for what God has got for this church. Because we know that Lee and Lysandre, they're partnering with God on his vision for this city. And we're partnering with them to see it happen. So we're going to be talking today about owning your thinking. And we're going to um, kick things off by reading Isaiah. This is the scripture that is um, actually the, 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 the thing that we're holding on to as a core team going into the building. And it's, it's this, it says, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out from the right To the left, your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in desolate cities. It says in another version to think big, to stretch your thinking in this season. And what God is doing is he's speaking to his children in Israel and he's reminding them of all that he has done for them. He's saying, why are you settling small? You are my children. I've got big things for you. Don't you remember when you were in exile and I brought you into the promised land? Don't you remember when Esther thought that that she was going to die, but the king just saved her and she got put in the position? Don't you remember the things that I have for you are big and not small? So don't shrink back, stretch, live large, live big lives. See, we're talking about owning our thinking and we need to own our thinking church so that we can grow into what God is calling us into. You see, the call of God is never limited to where we are. It is always beyond us. It is always pulling us somewhere else. God doesn't ask us to stay the same. He always makes a call that seems massive, but that's because he wants us to prepare us and grow us into what he's calling us into. We're going to own our thinking to grow into the impossible, the things that we think are impossible. And we're going to own our thinking to grow into the dreams that God dares us to dream. And we got some dreamers in the house today. We got some people that are willing to dare to dream for the things of God for this city, for the things of God in your family, your workplaces. You see, the call of God is to stretch into new territory, not to stay where you are. So don't let your workspaces stay the way they are. Dare to dream and push yourself into what God is calling you into. We had an amazing Own It Vision VT with our senior pastors, Pastor Glyn and Sophia, and they were talking in the VT about us living on the other side of someone else's Own It moment. And six years ago in 2017, I first came to this church. I first came to this building because of the Own It attitude and the Own It that you guys had in creating a space for me to come into this church. Now, I wasn't in church. I wasn't a Christian. My parents actually gave in a vision offering and brought me a seat to sit in before I was a Christian. And God has been faithful to his promises. This was actually the scripture that they were given when they came to Audacious Church was in large stretch. Move out of where you are. Keep believing for your family. Keep believing for your friends. And in 2017, when I first started coming to this church, I remember 
being involved and just starting to get involved in the, incre the incredible faith and encouragement culture that is Audacious Church. And I remember feeling so far away from the things that people were calling me to. I remember hearing things like, only thinking, think big, live large, and just knowing how small I was living and feeling so detached from it. But you see, church, God wants to meet us where we're at. God wants to take us on a journey. He wants to meet you where you are today and lead you through to the impossible. Except in 2017, you would have said, Josh, you'll be preaching in Denmark. You'll be leading an amazing youth ministry. You'll be preaching on Sundays in front of this church. I would have said, impossible, impossible. But God wants to take us all on a journey. He wants us to be willing, malleable, ready to let go of things, ready to step into his promises, ready to, to just walk in accordance with what he has for us. We all live in a world where it's really easy to naturally grow up and hold on to the small thinking that surrounds us. There's lots of phrases that are said. I remember growing up and hearing things like, play with the cards you dealt with. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Shut up and put up. All these things that we just hear around us in our spaces that actually limit our thinking from the start. You see, the culture of the world right now is one that wants to cut off the main artery to faith, hope, and trust. But God wants us to reattach, to remain in him, and to have life re-given to us so that we can come back to life. You see, small thinking leads to small lives, but big thinking leads to big lives. The culture of the world wants you to stay in your lane and not to change. But the culture of the kingdom of God wants you to step forward, wants you to think big, wants you to be transformed through Jesus, through faith. God is calling us beyond where we are. I love this verse in Romans that puts it really well. It says, don't be so well adjusted to the culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Without thinking. We need to own our thinking. Don't just become a part of the world, the small thinking that's around us. Be aware of your thinking. And it says this, it says, instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Ready, rec ready, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond from it. God is calling us out of where we are and into somewhere new. He wants us to own your thinking. There is an opportunity for us all to meet with Jesus, to re receive the Holy Spirit, and for him to minister to us, for him to walk step by step with us and take us on a journey from small to big. God wants to walk with you. He is with you. He is for you. He is championing you. He is by your side. It doesn't matter how small you think it is. Or I remember when I was first came to church, I used to think, own my thinking. I can't even own a thought. What? I, my mind is so busy. I'm so anxious. I've got so much going on. I've got the weight of, of the world on my shoulders. I can't even own a thought. How do you want me to own my thinking? Let me tell you that when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he brings renewal on of your mind, that there is life for you. God is on your side, own your thinking. And let's live lives, let's live big lives. Church, what would it look like if we all had the faith and the courage to dare to dream, to dare to dream for something, to dare to dream for a better future for our city, to dare to dream for the family members that aren't yet in church, to dare to dream for the, the jobs that we feel that God is calling us out of and into something new. You see, Joseph in the Bible in Genesis, he had a dream. It says this, it said, Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to the dream I had. We were bringing sheaves of grain out of the fields and suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves all fell to the ground around mine and bowed down to it. You see, his brothers hated him and they, they were saying, here comes the dreamer. Here comes the dreamer, they said to each other. Come, let's kill him and throw him into, into the cisterns and say that ferocious animals devoured him. Let's kill him. Let's kill him to kill his dream. Let's kill Joseph to kill his dream. They were saying about him, here comes the dreamer. 
How good would it be if that's what people said about us when we walked into rooms? Here comes that dreamer. His brothers were insecure that when they heard his dream, when they saw his dream, they had to try and kill him to kill his dream because of their own small thinking, their own insecurities. They were intimidated by their brother and by his dream. You see, Martin Luther King dared to have a dream. He opened his famous speech with, I have a dream. You see, Martin Luther King dared to dream of an America that wasn't, um, that had equal rights for their black and white citizens. He dared to dream. I believe and I think that Martin Luther King opened that speech with, I have a dream, because he knew this. He knew that dra- that dreams cultivated a change. He knew that dreams transform culture. He knew that dreams impact nations. He knew that dreams lead to the impossible being a reality. Church, dare to dream. This is our time to dream again. Those that feel old, those that feel weak, those that feel like they've lost sight. This is your time. God is saying, I dare you. I dare you to dream again. I dare you to dream for the first time, young people. What could your life look like? What could university look like? What could your future look like? YAs, as university is finishing you in your third year, what does the next five years of your life look like? Dare to dream. You are never too old to dream. God is calling you to dream. Now to him. See, responsibility over to God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask, imagine, according to his power. See, God is waiting to move. He is waiting to pour out his spirit on us. And I had a vision this morning as I was reading over this, um, this message today and I, I, just, I just caught a vision of like a waterfall and there was a beach surrounding it well, of stones, not like a sandy beach. Not many waterfalls in the ocean. Um, but there was, there was a waterfall and it was falling from heaven and there was plenty of people camped outside of the waterfall and they were just sitting there watching it because who knows that waterfalls are really beautiful to watch? Who knows that, that actually it's, it's amazing to be sat next to water? That it, it, you know, we can take pictures and we can put it on Instagram. And I just had this picture of God pouring something new over this city. And instead of us sitting on the side watching it, we need to be willing to get wet. We need to be willing to jump in because God is pouring his spirit out. He's causing people to have visions. He's causing people to have dreams. But we need to be okay with stepping out of the recliner chair that we're sat on enjoying the view and step into the water, be submerged and put ourselves right in the middle of the mix. Guys, own your thinking. Even if your thought is to sit up off your chair, take a step forward. If that's the thought that you can own, that is the best thought that you can own. It will lead you to owning your thinking. Start small. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. And then when we read throughout Joseph, we see that there is a process throughout his life. He has a dream. He tells his brothers. They try to kill him. He, you know, gets put in a dungeon. He, but the dream of him being the, the pr- people bowing to him, God undergoes a process in his life to make that dream become a reality. In church, what we need to do is we need to trust the process. We need to trust the process of God working through our lives to take our dreams and turn them into a reality. So that is my encouragement to you today. Trust the process. Just like Joseph had to trust the process, we too have to trust the process of God working in and through our lives. And it can seem intimidating to say something as big as own your thinking. I remember being sat there thinking the same thing. But God wants to take you on a journey. He wants to move you from step to step to step to step to step to step from owning thought to thought to thought to thought to then getting to this place and this this area where you are not just owning thoughts but you're starting to own thoughts of thoughts and then thoughts of thoughts of thoughts and then we come into this place where actually we're we're owning our thinking 
we're in control. But for me, that process started. And I've, I've got three steps that I want to give to you if you are struggling with owning your thoughts to get to owning your thinking. And it sounds really simple. And it's going straight back to the basics. But my three steps for you are coming up. And step one to the process of owning your thinking is accepting the gift of salvation. That is number one. It says in Ephesians that for grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not by your own doing. It is a gift from God. Not a result of your works, so that no one may boast. Let me just speak on salvation really quickly. There is nothing that you can do to earn salvation. It is already there for you. Jesus came to die so that you can have life and life to the full. Jesus came to die so that he can be in relationship with you, connecting you to the Father. If you want to get to the point where you're owning your thinking or even just owning a thought, your first step is own your salvation. Accept the gift of salvation. Jesus is sat Readily knocking at your door. Mark spoke about it earlier. He's waiting. He's waiting to come in. Step one, accept the gift of salvation. And just really quick, there are some Christians in the room that need to um, re-catch hold of the joy of your salvation. It says this in Psalms, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. You've already been in a season where you've got salvation. You've, you've had the revelation of Jesus. But over the years, you've lost Sight of the joy. Let me speak to those people in the room right now because I know there are people here and there are people listening on the podcast. You feel like you are in the motions. Remember, there is nothing that you did to earn this gift. That Jesus gave it to you even when you are at your worst, at your lowest, at your most lost point. He gave you the gift of salvation. Christians, come on. Let's, let's pray for God to restore the joy. The second step for you in owning your thinking and owning a thought is to receive the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. It says in Romans 8, it says, to those who live, who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life in peace. There is peace in your anxiety. There is restoration in your depression. God wants to work in you through his Holy Spirit. It says this also in Romans, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Remember that verse we read earlier? Be aware of your thinking. Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Holy Spirit wants to enter your life and renew you from the inside out, changing you, giving you power over your thoughts, giving you power over your thinking, over your mind. And the third step for you is to take every thought captive. 2 Corinthians says, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That means the negative thoughts that are in your mind, taking hold of them and making them obedient to the life that God is calling you to, for the goodness. He is, you are his child. He loves you. He cares for you. If you are in that place where the, the negative thoughts are think are louder than the good thoughts. Go back to his Bible. Speak to your small group leader. Let's sit down. Let's explore who God says you are, who Jesus says you are. The words that he's speaking over you right now is the intercessor sitting between heaven and earth, praying for you right now, praying for your salvation, praying because he knows the joy of our salvation. So they're my three steps for you. Take your thought captives. And we can have God dreams before being Christians. We can have a dream from God. We could have dared to dream, but not have accepted the gift of salvation. Because there are things in my life that are outplaying themselves now in this space that I'm in that were a dream before I was a Christian. But I couldn't fully see them. 
They were just desires on my heart. They were things that, that God had planted seeds of that only now through accepting the gift of salvation, through receiving the Holy Spirit and through allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to me day in, day out, walk each step with me and being willing to learn how to take my thoughts captive, only now am I living and seeing these seeds that God had put on my heart. And I... God's been speaking to me a lot this week as I've been preparing this message for you. And there are people in the room that have been trying to operate a God dream. But what has been happening is you've been hitting glass ceilings. You've been trying to fulfill a dream that God has put in your heart, on your life, but you forgot to include God in it. There are things that you can't figure out. There's this space that feels really, like there's friction. Like you can't move through it. But God is saying to you, I'm over here. I'm, step in the waterfall. Step in the plans that I have. Step out of your process and into my process. We need to trust God's process. Trust the process. Own your thinking. And when you've dared to dream and you've owned your thinking and you've trusted the process and God says it's time, then, church, then we can attempt the impossible because we've dared to dream. We've had a vision. We've trusted God in the process. And now it's time for us to step out. It's time for us to enlarge. It's time for us to stretch. It's time for us to start spreading from the right into the left. It's time for us to put our faith into action and attempt the impossible. You see, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Owning your salvation leads to you owning your thinking. Owning your thinking creates big mindsets which transform into big living. What are the things in your life that seem impossible? What are the things that God is calling you to attempt? What are the things that God is saying, now is your time. Now is your time to step out and step into the impossible. For me, I have many things that have happened in my life that are impossible, but I wanna share a few with you if that's okay. And about a year ago, I was sat on the front row and Pastor Mark was doing the salvation response and he was smashing it as he always does. And that week had been a really weird week because I'd had a conversation with my little brother, Sam. And he told me that he'd started this new job and that he was working with a Muslim guy. And he'd been through this like process that week of almost debating faith with this guy. And we could really see that Jesus was stirring something in his spirit. And uh, the thing about me and my brother Sam is that I'm in church and he wasn't in church, two years apart. And I was living in a place where I thought, nah, this is never gonna happen. This is, this is kind of like my space, but I can't see my brother being in it and coexisting. Um, it was an impossible thought for me. And Pastor Mark was doing the salvation response and my brother was out in Snowdonia climbing. He's a climber. And Pastor Mark came off the stage. He ran up to me and said, Josh, your brother's at the back of the room. Your brother's just responded to Jesus. I'm stood there going, what? I walked to the back of the room. My brother sat there in sobs of tears. You see, God had used the conversations he'd had in his workspace to remind him of the seed that was planted in him when he was younger. Attempt the impossible. Over this last year, my dad has also made a decision for Jesus in this building. You see, and God has taken me and him on a journey of restoration and of healing. It's low and it's slow, but it's okay. I'm happy with that. I wanna walk in accordance with what God has got for us. Five years ago, impossible. He wasn't even at my wedding. That was two years ago. God is doing the impossible. Audacious Youth is growing in its opportunity. It's growing in its influence in the UK and outside. We are seeing young people. We had 10 new young people on Friday night here at Youth. God is moving. He is doing the impossible. We're buying the building across the road. Hello. God is doing the impossible. Our kids ministry upstairs. We've got amazing kids pastors at the back, Chris and Laura. They are outgrowing the space that they are in. It is our kids ministry that is 
pushing us into new vision, pushing us into new territory. God is working. He is doing the impossible. Keep walking with us. We're doing it, church. We are all attempting the impossible and we're seeing God come through. Dare to dream. Trust the process. Attempt the impossible. God is moving. God is moving here in this church. He's moving through you. He's moving in your family. He is moving in your workspaces. He's working in the schools. He's working in the universities. Keep attempting the impossible. Keep attempting all that you are doing. And if you are new in this space, maybe you've been coming for a few months, maybe, you know, this is the first time you've been at Audacious Church for a vision offering and you're seeing how big we're going and it can almost seem that you are far away from that level of maybe enthusiasm or vision or faith. Let me encourage you that God wants you to step forward even if you think it is small because your small is not small. Your small is big when the power of God meets it. It says in Zechariah, do not despise small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. God is rejoicing that there is a work starting in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind. God is excited that you are starting to own thoughts so that He can lead you to a place of owning your thinking. What can you do? this week that takes a thought captive? What can you do in a moment when we ask people to come to the front and receive the Holy Spirit that is brave and ask you to step forward? And what can you do to accept the gift of salvation? Thank you for listening to this Audacious podcast. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. We'd love for you to join us at one of our campuses, Manchester, Chester, or online every Sunday, 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. 